Gray here for the play on the quarterback Sonny Gray and Tennessee uh, signing Nick Robert Sr. Rodriguez Leach. Yes, his of course is a run oriented offense led by quarterback Taylor Finnegan. Rumor has it that the football coaches have revamped everything as far as their offense and the defensive schemes in preparation for the nice game. The temperature starts out game time in the 60s and they get down to the 40s. No further rain, a slight breeze. Do not begin spring journey. Don't be repeat and stay tuned. Go back up to the day. All right, Donnie, thank you very much. And uh, we'll try to get the coin toss down there uh, here in just a second. We'll bring in John Dickens and uh, John, let you go ahead with the starting lineups and we'll just take care of the coin toss up here and uh, I'll let you know how that turns out. Okay, well, first of all, for the uh, Cougar Cavaliers tonight, it'll be a Jordan Brook Brooks Bank, a senior. He'll be in with Texas Barnaby, number 52, Austin Harris. Number 60 is Kyle Roach. He'll be at guard along with the center, Brad Eich. Uh, number 50, number 78 is Kirk Cole. He'll be at the right guard. And number 73 at right tackle will be Ethan Gordon. Uh, the quarterback is Taylor Hennigan. And at uh, number six, Mason Esponza will be at uh, one of the uh, run record quarterbacks. The fullback is Salada. Number 13, number 13 is Austin Norton. And then also in that backfield will be Dustin Langford, number three. The flanker is Jared Griggs, number 22. Taylor Richardson, number 45, is the place kicker. And the split in is number 80, Casey Webb. John uh, Swear won the toss. They elected to receive just to pass that along on your Steve Martin construction field report. And now you've got more uh, Sinet P at Ballpark Trophy and AG Sporting Goods starting lineups. Yeah, and Smyrna will have number two quarterback uh, Sonny Gray. Ten back number three uh, will be David Sanders or number 22 Jeremiah Bryson to kind of interchange those two. A full back will be number four Brandon Hinch. The right tackle is number 56 Clinton Allen. And right guard will be number 50 Jeremy Key. A center will be number 54 James Hudson. The left guard will be number 79 Tyler Montgomery. The left tackle number 65 Tyler Eden. Uh, wide out is number five Rod Wilkes. Number five, number 84 will be Jesse Perez at the other wide out. Will Martin, number nine, is wide receiver. The tight end will be number 42, Casey Thompson. Thomason. Sonny Gray will be doing the punting uh, again. And the long snapper is Terry Thomason, number 42. And those are your starting lineups for the Smyrna Bulldogs and the Pittsburgh Cavaliers. Brought to you by Sonny P and Bob Parks Realty and Agents Sporting by Work on Sunday. That's Jeff Bowman, but there's over 30 years of experience to work for you. Yeah, that's Tinder Denver. Or worse, she hit that deer like somebody did. Lawrence Body Shop is the place to call. 8 and 6 8 Easy number to remember. 8 and 6 0 Body Shop. The Smyrna Bowling Center now has 52 sparkling lanes. It is a beautiful facility. We're talking with new coordinator Kelly Marlin now and TWSAA. Still coming back here for their state bowling championship. He's covered the state and he's down TWSAA certified. Kelly, you've also got some great news for you. It's a wonderful opportunity because none of the kids ride the bench. Every kid participates. The Smyrna Bowling Center has 52 lanes just off San Bradley Parkway at Weekly Lane. Look for the big, brightly colored blue game with the bowling fans. FM. 100.5 and 101.9. Oh, yeah, 1450. And go inside sports.com. 7 and 3, Cookville. Jerry Jocelyn, the head coach. 7 and 3, Smarta. Philip Shadowen is the head coach. And we are about ready to see Ta uh, Taylor Richardson put the tail in the football. We'll begin the playoff ride here. We have two Rutherford County teams in the playoffs. Hopefully one in the Blue Cross Bowl. That's all we can have. Wish we could have them both because we may have the best two teams in the state of Tennessee. Yeah, what a shame that is, really. And it's a squid kick, and I don't think it went the distance, and I don't know that it ever touched anybody, but we'll see. The officials are saying it is recovered by the Cookville Cavaliers. Well, that's why we an auspicious start here. A strange start, if you will, and... Uh, that is a strange play to kind of open up, but uh, let's see if we can go down to check in with Donnie Johnson. Um, kind of a weird start there to this uh, game with that onside kick, Don. We'll catch him in just a second. Hennigan fires left, goes left, and finds his receiver. And that is number 80, Casey Webb. 
Sanders on the tackle and a nice pickup of 12 yards. Kind of uh, pulling out all the stops here early, John. Well, I was impressed with that throw. Uh, just really very accurate. Left hander keeping fired and uh, he found the web basically wide open. One of the weaknesses, if you do, if Lewis Winning has a weakness, would be probably a little bit of that secondary. First and ten, the ball deep in Bulldog territory at the 36 yard line. Making the handoff to the third option, the back, and not much room for him. Maybe a couple of yards. We'll have to see where they spot it. Looks like about a two-yard pickup. Dustin Langford on the carry. Second down to go. Ball at the 33 yard line. And John, uh, I don't know. Things like this kind of get you back on your heels a little bit. And uh, I don't know about the Bulldogs, but they've got to cinch it down here on defense. Where they're doing, uh, they want to keep them out of the end zone. They, they'll give up a field drive, they want to keep them out. Back to pass is in again. Right side, pass is complete to Jared Griggs, and he's going to be down at the 22 yard line, and it's enough for the first down with an 11 yard pickup needed at seven. Sanders on the tackle once again for the Bulldogs. Capacity crowd. Here on the Smyrna side, football block, a uh, pretty good amount of fans. Yeah, they've got uh, temporary bleachers out there full as well. Nothing fancy about that, just a little sideline route that time by Griggs. And uh, Smyrna gave him just a little bit too much room to catch the football. Backfield is split. And the handoff is to Sela. And he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage and dropped by Andrew Jenkins for a loss of what, five yards? For the back three, I think, Brian. They're going to mark it at the 25 yard line. But he was pushed back by about 100. Second down, 12 to go. Just underway here. An onside kick gave the Cavaliers the football to begin. Three in the backfield, two lined up to the right of the quarterback, one directly behind of Hennigan. Pass incomplete. Oh, the receiver did not look up. Reeves, he was open. He was beating, beating the, the defensive player, but he didn't know where the football was. And uh, Hennigan threw it, but uh, it really wasn't over his head. He just wasn't looking for the football. Brings up third down, 12 to go. Ball at the 24 of Smyrna headed toward the school here and uh, toward Sam Ridley. Left to right on the radio dial, clad in their white with the blue helmets. They have the numbers on the helmets. Hennigan going to work for the shotgun and now call timeout. Cook will take some timeout. We'll step aside as well. Scoreless, third and 12 coming up for the Cavs. This is Kay Mitchell for Brent's Tire. Brent and I would like to invite our customers and friends to a Customer Appreciation Day on November the 16th from 7 to 5 and November 17th from 7 to 3. We will be selling all our tires for $5 above invoice plus mounting and balancing and super appreciation specials on other services. We will be serving 9.52 on the clock, third and 12 coming up for the Cavaliers. Then again at quarterback. Actually, they've got Jared Briggs in at quarterback. Rolling out left side, in some trouble, in lots of trouble, and he's going to be down at the 24 yard line. Picked up nothing. Fourth down coming up. Yeah, that was a big play, a little trick play. I think what they had there was a design for Briggs to run it. Uh, around that left end, but there was nowhere to go except inside, and that's where Smyrna was standing there waiting on him. We're going to try a kick here. And there it is, Taylor Richardson, number 45, breaks to hold, and a 32-yard field goal attempt upcoming. Snap, set, kick is up, it is away, has enough leg, and good. So the Cavaliers make good and get three out of that first drive that started out with an onside kick. With strong toe in it, no doubt about that, went straight through the uprights. Back in one minute, couple off three to... FM 100.5 and 101.9, AM 1450, and go inside sports.com. It ran under the circumstances. That was a pretty good play defensively for Smyrna, having the three points uh, after that turnover on the kickoff. Expect anything from the Cavaliers. 
As uh, they get ready to kick off again from Richardson, I wouldn't put it past Jerry Johnson to do another onside kick. And Smyrna has their uh, good hands folks up there. Wilkes deep back. And they get plenty of toe in this one. And it is going to be taken up a 15, 20, 25 outside, 30, 40. And going to be down across the 40 to about the 43. And that was a nice return by number 12. Montez Bukowski. Got 23 yards on that return, and uh, just a good break to the outside, and uh, didn't really need him blocking. He just uh, out, outran the defenders on that play, and you could see a little bit of that Smyrna speed there, Brian, against Cougar. First and 10 for the Smyrna High School Bulldogs, their first touch of the football, trailing here 3 nothing. Ball at their own 43-yard line, Sonny Gray at quarterback. Defending 5A state champions here in the playoffs. Going left side is Bryson. And Bryson lunging forward. Second, third effort. Gets the ball up to the 46. And now the ball loose and fumbled. And don't know. The official hasn't pointed yet. I think the whistle blew. They say he was down. Yeah, I think, and, I, and I think that's a good call, really. I, that, that really would have come awfully late there, Brian. I think that was a very good call. Uh, about a two-yard pick up there by Bryson. Other scores of interest on your Jennings and Ayers Funeral Home scoreboard. William Blunt up 6-0, two minutes to go in the second, and uh, eight minutes to go in the second, 7-7, seven, seven, Oak Ridge and Dobbins Bennett. Those games now at halftime, the Dobbins Bennett game at least. Sonny Gray with a second and eight. Bryson going right side. Good hole, 50, 45, 40, cuts back outside and tripped off down to the 35. But in Cavalier territory and a first bank first down for the Bulldogs. 20 yards. Tripped up by Eaton there, John. I thought that one had six ripped on. Well, he got a great block from his right tackle. And then, Brian, he then made a great move to cut to the inside to pick up another additional 10 yards. First and 10, the ball at the 36. On the left hash, moving from right to left, are the purple clad Bulldogs with the yellow helmets and the purple S on the side. Bryson going off left guard now, big hole 30, 20, outside and tipped up, cut up under him actually, and put it to the 15, but another nice run by 21 yards. The Cougar doesn't have an answer for Jeremiah Bryson right now. And what a great cut to the inside again. He faked to the right and then cut back against the grain. And that, I mean, that beautiful run by Bryson. He's only a freshman. As William Winston would say so eloquently. <laughs> first and 10. Another first bank, first down. Bryson with a split back field. Hendricks back there as well. Brandon Hendricks. Now working from the shotgun is Gray. And it's again to. Bryson again cuts back outside and then inside and down across the 10, close to the five yard line. It's going to be marked back at the six or seven yard line. They can't get another first down in there. That's a knockoff pickup, and I believe it's going to be second down and a yard to go. Good block that time by Brandon Hendricks from the scoreback spot. Did a beautiful job of uh, just pushing his man off to the right and uh, enabling Bryson to cut to the inside again. Deloach on the tackle for the Cavaliers. Second down, one from the seven. Wilkes wide out to the right. Cody Hager to the left. Eye backfield for Sonny under center. Play, quick drop, back to pass, and a little pushing and shoving. What's a touchdown regardless? Touchdown, Bulldogs! Wilkes from seven yards away. First pass of the night. TD for Sonny Gray to Rod Wilkes. And uh, another great uh, all pro pitch, if you ask me, by uh, Rod Wilkes. He just uh, worked his man, his defender, and then just reached up and grabbed the football. You can body pretty well on that one, Brian. Here's the extra attempt. Snap short. The kick up and good by Adam Woodard. And it's 7 0. Bulldogs up will be right back. On the ball magazine, it's Middle Tennessee's number one source for high school sports, and it's free. <laughs> Stadium ready for the kickoff here by the Bulldogs after an impressive drive. 7 3. What John that is called, you just running it down your throat. That's right, Brian. And it took uh, one, two, three, four, four minutes, three minutes, and uh, four minutes, just a little over four minutes on the clock for that drive. From the Bulldogs, seven and three. Cavaliers, seven and three. 
Crawford. Here's Adam Porter for the kickoff. And a nice one. Going to be taken at the five. 10, 15, and right there, right before he got to the 20, is Solomon. Make that Salada, Zach Salada. And he is Salada out. Chicken's on the tackle. Let's go down to Donnie Johnson. He's got a Steve Martin construction field report. Big thanks, Brian. See you watch. That was all. Awesome. Uh, so for that one pass, a uh, uh, highlighted first of Jeremiah Bryce, and that one pass to Roddy Wills in defense. The Bulldogs also have a starting two freshman, which is very rare for a 5'18. It's linebacker Dion Meadows. They say he is one. Taking the ball player is only a freshman. He gets a chance to show his stuff here on this job. And again, hand off to the tailback, and that is Justin Langford. And Langford carries the ball across the 20, up to the 29-yard line near that first down marker, but it's going to be close. They may have to measure. It's going to be second and short. They marked him back a yard. Garner on the tackle. Second down, one yard to go. Cavaliers marching to the line. 6.06 left here in the first, and your score is 7-3, Smyrna Bulldogs. I'm not sure what all this delay is about, but they finally mark the ball and wind the clock. And again with some options in the backfield, the ball fumbled, and Smyrna may have it. We'll have to see. And they do! Smyrna Bulldogs have recovered the football. Well, I don't know what happened there. It must have been a case of uh, a bad exchange because nobody really went in. And uh, the next thing you know, ball's on the ground and uh, Smyrna's recovered it. Well, secure position right now, Brian. They're going to start out at about the 27 yard line here in Cavalier territory. Wide outs to the right. Cody Hager and Will Mark to the left. Rod Wilkes. Bison is in the backfield, split to Sonny's left as he works from the gun. Three-step drop, no pressure. Cody Hager wide open and down to the 12-yard line. Cody could not have been more wide open there, and that's a 15-yard pickup for the Smyrna Bulldogs and another first bank first down. Cox on the tackle. John, boy, I tell you what, the uh, offensive line of Smyrna is doing an awesome job there. Oh, there wasn't anybody anywhere close to Sonny Gray. He could have tied his shoe strings and found his nails on most of the next part. Sure, there'll be some nail filing. <laughs> what a great description. He did have that much time. Here's Gray giving to Bryson. Bryson cuts it open. Left side and now toward the end zone and dives. Yes! Touchdown! Jeremiah Bryson from 15 yards out. They do not have an answer for Jeremiah Bryson. Not one answer at all. Another touchdown, 15 yards at time. Here is Woodard to attempt the extra. Snap set, the kick is away, it is up, and it is it's good. Right now it is 14-3 in favor of the Smyrna Bulldogs. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Tweety Morgan at Green Bay. Come in. A third to a Marcus third. 139 to carry in the first quarter. Riverdale seven. 
and Eke for Kudra. Mason Espinosa, the quarterback on the carry. Awake to cleaner air by keeping your home healthy and comfortable with a highly engineered system by Carrier through Roscoe Brown. Whether it's hot or cold outside, Roscoe Brown is Middle Tennessee's expert to help tailor the right carrier system for you, giving your home ultimate comfort all year long. Turn to the experts with Carrier and Roscoe Brown, your Middle Tennessee's leader in heating and air conditioning. Call 893-6972 for more information. Here's the kickoff after the delay of game by the Cavaliers. Going to be taken at the 20, 25, Bryson at the 30, 35, and at the 40. And up to the 41, maybe, probably just the 40, but a nice run back by Jeremiah Bryson. Lined up over there right side. If Jonathan this continues, that freshman is going to have a stat game tonight. Well, it's already five periods, 67 yards, one TD. And we're in the, uh, what quarter? Uh, well, quarter. still in the first. Yes. <laughs> a minute 13 left. Here in the first, it's Ferna has the ball at the 40, so 60 yards to Pater. Moving from right to left on your radio. Gray from the shotgun this time. Two wide right, one to the left, that's Wilkes. Gray step drop, plenty of time. No pressure, and Hager gets into the numbers and drops it. Well, if we could have held on, though, the uh, defender had slipped, and that was uh, Michael Cox, and uh, he would have run all day. Uh, Hager, boy, I know he wants to have that back. Sack it down and 10 from the 40. Casey trying to run with it, Brian, before you, you know, you had it, really. Took his eyes off of it a little bit. I am just shocked at the amount of time that Sonny Gray has to sit back there in the pocket. Eyeing it over, calls for the snap, and they finally get back there in the backfield to him up to the 41 and a yard pickup for Jeremiah Bryson. 
Well, they got in there quick that time. That's the they first sure time did. tonight. They, they clipped uh, Sonny Gray as he was handing it off to Bryson. Was lucky they got a yard out of that. Austin Norton chopped him down out there at the 41 for a yard gain. Third down and nine. 45 seconds left here in the first. We haven't had a punt in the game. Hager, one of two receivers to the right. The other is Martin and Wilkes to the left. Sonny with Bryson split to his left. Back to pass. A little bit of pressure. Protection breaks down. Gray has plenty of room. Waiting on the blockers. 50. Yank down at the 49-yard line. It's enough for a first bank. First down. A 12-yard run by Sonny Gray. Boy, just when you think you've got everything covered and you've, you've got some running where you think you want them, Sonny Gray turns off with a great run like that. Just ball, this blocker just beautifully. Kind of like the old days where uh, the uh, right quarterback would follow the blocker all the way. 11 seconds and a first back, first down. Sonny, maybe not going to call this last play. Don't think they will. And that's going to be the end of the first with the Bulldogs up here, 14-10 over the visiting. I'm Jerry Lowe with the Chapels and Marcus Burrow Smyrna. We're proud to be Welcome back to the Smyrna High School. Brian Barrett, John Dinkins, Tom Hoover in the booth, Donnie Johnson on the field. First and 10 from the Cavalier 49 for the Smyrna Bulldogs. Sonny Gray from the shotgun this time. A quick pass across the middle, and it's caught by Cody Hager at the 35-yard line and dives to the 34, and a gain of 14, and another first bank first down. Cox on the tackle for the Cavs. Brian, I'll tell you, it's a, he, he, you're right about it. He's got all day back there, and he, he was just waiting for Hager to run his route. Looked at him the whole entire route. See if this protection keeps up. Just underway here in the second. Bulldogs up 14-10. Quick pass to Wilkes. Left side and tripped up. And he had some green pasture to go. Tripped up at the 31 for a three-yard gain. Briggs on the tackle for Cookville High School. Let's go down to Donnie Johnson. Steve Mark Construction Field Report. Okay, thanks, Brian. I'll tell you what, right now we got ourselves a good old-fashioned offensive shootout. I know the Smyrna coaches are really pleased early in the game with how well the offense is going, especially with the downfield blocking. And on offensive football, it looks like they've opened it up a lot more than they have been throughout the season. So quite a game so far, guys. Steve Martin Construction, 904-9639. A beautiful homes in Merrimont Spring. Sunny Gray pressured and maybe made a bad pass there, John. Uh, pass incomplete out there to Cody Hager. Really, and uh, the defender there for the Cavaliers, not been so far back, Casey Webb, he might have had a chance at that one, or Tyler Eaton. A good, uh, good list that time by the linebackers of Cookville, uh, and uh, Sonny caught him a little bit by surprise and uh, threw it off his back foot for the incompletion. Riverdale is leading 7 nothing with 5 minutes, 30 seconds left before halftime there. Here it's 14-10 in favor of Smyrna. There at the Cavalier 31. Bryson left side. Busts up the middle. 25, 20, cuts back and gets it down to the 19. Boy, every time he touches the football, that time for 12 yards, John, it's almost electric. You think he's going to break it every time. Well, that time, though, it was hard running, Brian. It wasn't elusive running. He broke about four tackles to get that first down. And uh, just a, a, a really impressive run. The kid can do it all. Ten and a half minutes left here before halftime. Smyrna 14, Cookville 10. Another first bank first down for the Bulldogs as they have it at the Cavalier 19. Get it toward the school here. Sonny's going to work from the shotgun. Two left, one right. Wide receivers across the middle to Wilkes. And incomplete right at the 10 yard line. And Rod will be the first to tell you he should have had that one. Well, he usually does get that, those kind of. Uh, that one, uh, almost, he almost had it long enough. But luckily, it was called an incomplete pass. Otherwise, we're looking for it. Check it down and 10 to go. Sonny has Jeremiah split to his right. Now Boston going to set up to the left. 
into the football here and John I, I don't know how you react if you're the Bulldogs to that well I think uh, a missed opportunity right there a big missed opportunity and uh, I think I would have maybe tried to get that ball to Bryson just a little bit more in that uh, series but uh, they decided to go to the air and kind of got kind of a little bit of a long distance situation and had to pass the ball here we go with Hennigan they played with three quarterbacks tonight had the Cavaliers a little misdirection and right at the line of scrimmage, maybe lost a half a yard there. And I believe that was Langford carried the football. They're going to give him a yard. Garner on the tackle for the Bulldogs, who are holding on to a 14 10 lead here. Rolling out with Brad Ishi. As the center, three backs split everywhere. Going left to the first option, Toledo. He picks up a couple. Third down, and we'll call it seven. Cameron on the takedown. Want to remind you that uh, John Santa Claus is coming to town. You'll be at Loveless Fine Photography on Clark tomorrow. Oh, from eight until three. three. Yeah, eight until three tomorrow. Loveless Fine Photography plus December six, seven, and eight. Loveless Fine Photography over there on Clark. Back to pass, Hennigan under some pressure and lost one high and incomplete on the third down. It brings up fourth down and an obvious punting situation here. But now this is football, so. Fourth and seven. Because we took a little more conservative approach that series, and it's going to get pretty good field position for Smyrna. at his own 44 yard line. Well, he's dangerous from that, from that area right there. Richardson to kick uh, to punt. Almost got a big purple paw on it. Wilson's going to let it roll. He's not going to touch it. Good, smart decision there. Rolled to the 39. John, that, that is where a freshman might say, okay, let me hurry up and pick it up, even though you hear those footsteps, and he just he just stood there and let it roll. Well, we've seen Rod, Rod, Rod Reeves schools do that. Well, the freshman and the sophomore, and uh, he's paid dearly for it a few times. But that's just that senior leadership and uh, how you mature over the... Eight minutes, 23 seconds on the clock, and uh, let's get a scoreboard update from Tom Hoover. Right, it's... Uh, Right here, it's turn of 14, triple zero in the second. Riverdale, seven, Warren County, nothing. Uh, about halfway through the second quarter. Lincoln County, six, Lebanon, zero in the first. It's Wilson Central, seven, Crawford County, zero. William Brunt, six, nothing over Campbell County. And it's Dobbins Bennett and Oak Ridge tied at seven. That's the latest score we had to have. And it's Farragut, 10, Jersey County, seven. All going left side to Bryson. And Bryson gonna be cut down after about a yard or two. 
You're gonna only give him a yard. Well, I'm sure he's getting a lot of scores more. Well, we got some East Tennessee scores, and uh, some of those scores will find satellite. You get most off the satellite. State, spread the state, spread the state. Statewide. We're concentrating on the upper hand for the Brandon teams that we may see down the road at somebody. It is Murdoch Riverdale or both. I'm trying to win tonight, though. Bryson. Well, I believe that is going to get off off the bottom of that pile with the football. Bryson just kind of dangled it out there, John. Like a carrot, and uh, it was swiped away. Well, he really just lost it, but the Smyrna offense is still out there, so I think they say his knee was down, I would say. Boy, that's knocking a bullet, lost of one. Well, he was still standing there, it looked like to me when he dropped it. Maybe he one of the bullets. Johnny Gray from the shotgun, third and 11 from their own 33. 14 10 Bulldogs. Now, first it across the middle and incomplete. Cody Hager was in the area, and also out there was Jesse Torres, but it was really too low for either one of them. Well, these are two different quarters, aren't they? First quarter, offensive showdown, and now we turned into a defensive struggle here. Now the Cavaliers are going to get fairly decent field position. The deep man for the Cavs is Jared Griggs. Sonny Gray to punt. This is the first time the Bulldogs have punted in this game. On the fourth and 11, the decision is to punt for the Bulldogs of Smyrna High. Gray gets this one high, good hang time, but it's going to sail out of bounds right at the 40 yard line, so 60 yards to go for the Cavaliers, no return. Well, what a great catch on the sidelines by Wesley Cadena. He just won almost like one handed. There's a beautiful catch. Oh, well, he's not on the field, but he no. made a nice catch. Out of bounds. Now he's on the field. Way to go. He's a lineman. Wesley? Wesley? Who says linemen don't have good hands? Uh, I, that's all a fallacy. Tom Hoover was one of the greatest linemen with, with good hands. Tom Hoover? One of the good hands people. But not now. Not no. now. He's almost like a good neighbor now. That's right. First and ten for Cookville High School. Trailing here by four to the Smyrna Bulldogs at their own 40. And Espinoza back in at quarterback. Pitch goes back to Langford. Langford right side at the 45 and out of bounds there for a four yard pickup. Rod Wilkes pushed him out from his safety spot. Just shy of the 45, I think. Nose of the football is gonna be the 45 on the right hash. Riverdale leading Warren County 7 0. The last score we had. Five and a half minutes left before halftime. They are a little further along than we are. Warren County hanging pretty tough right there, aren't they? Sounds like it. Espinosa snap a little low to him. Going left side. Burns a quick pass out there to Brooks Bank. And it's at the 42 yard line, so we're going to give him a yard and a half on that pickup. Third down. Any kind of a chance of winning the game. Third down, four yards to go. Ball still in football territory at the 47 yard line. They need to get to the Smyrna 49 for a first down. Third down, four yards to go. Ball still in football territory at the 47 yard line. Uh, he may be well in South Carolina. Briggs is one of two wideouts to the right. Brooks back out there as well. Casey Webb to the left. Under some trouble, Espinosa has to loft the long one incomplete. You're going to have some of these. Incomplete, intended for Brooks Bank. And the bending on that play was Corey Kamen. I think Corey was real close to some pass interference there. Good coverage that time. And, uh, Again, it's one of those. Both teams kind of exchanging. You know, well, they almost look caught, like Carl and Thomas with each other on offense. We noticed that Cooper comes out with three or four wide receivers, three receivers to the right side that last play. They definitely throw a lot of looks at you to the Cavs. 
Once upon a line, but lost his helmet on that exchange. Still looking for it. The ball rolling down to around the 19. So that's where the Bulldogs will have it. No return on the play. Five minutes, 33 seconds left here before half. 14 10 in favor of Smyrna High. Let's check in now with Lee Johnson. He is uh, strolling the sideline. Tell me what you got down there. Well, guys, uh, quite a ball here on the offensive line for us. They've got two big guys, two for pretty much handles on offense. Seems like they may be maybe going back to more of the traditional offense. The Smyrna's got the ball back. You know, let's see if they can't put together a scoring job and stretch that lead a little bit here. Sonny Gray going to Cody Hager has it. Plays the Pushed out of bounds at the 46-yard line. A little jog going on down there, but the teams head over to the sidelines. 27-yard pickup there after the catch. The pitch and catch to uh, Hager from Sonny Gray. Well, that, that was about this tackle. Uh, Hager was able to get about 20 yards on that. Still would have been a good pickup, but not that much. Another first down for Smyrna Bryan. There's fifth. Of the first half. That is a first bank first down for the Bulldogs. Two line left. One to the right, that's Wilkes. Max Wood is Bryson. They go to him. Bryson gets off his own man twice, three times now. Now breaks it down and picks up the yard. Always on the bar. Wow. Time, Riverdale up seven. That's not good. Something of that nature. Right out to the left, Hager and Will Martin. Close to the right. Down and nine. They're on 48 out of the ball. Four left. Left side. Oh, wait. It was in the vicinity, John, but we didn't have a, a break on it. It was at the time of a big coming in from the safety position, Brian. The bridge is back there. Back from that. Well, here we go. Nine, eight, ten balls. Oh, those ladies. That's first to ten. Pass incomplete. Ride to the would have been first down yardage, but he's knocked out. Let's go down to Donnie and uh, what you got down there on Jeremiah Bryson. Okay, guys, uh, there are questions from space and Jeremiah Bryson came looking off the field. Unfortunately, it looks like it's just a real bad leg cramp. And they're working that out right now, so hopefully he'll be able to get back to the line up here in a few minutes. Speaking of construction, one of these two quarters from the new Vermont Springs community, 904 9639. Fourth down and punting situation now for the Smyrna Bulldogs. Snap a little high, gets off a low screamer. He's going to take a big Smyrna bounce, picked up at the 10, 15. And up to about the 17, 18 yard line. And on the return there was Jared Griggs. Coteed and Thomas had on the takedown. John, uh, still time here. Neither team has really shown much offensively in this quarter. It's been amazing. It was just a flurry in the first quarter, and here it's just been uh, fun, fun, fun. I think both defenses have made, have made adjustments, Brian, and uh, I think Donnie was right earlier on that third report that the two was going to be a little more conservative uh, game plan here now since they're close to the ball game. They got about two yards there. That was uh, Dustin Blankford from his tailback spot. Brings up second down. Blankford's risk for about 74 yards here in this first half. Second down, and we'll call it seven. Seven and a half, really. 
326 on the clock. If they get another first down or two in here, Smyrna may not get the football back in this half, and football gets the football to begin the second half. They rush to the line quickly. Pitch to Langford again, hit at the line of scrimmage, maybe even lost a yard in there. A great penetration by the Bulldogs. But that pitch is high. It's a wonder Langford didn't get his head knocked off. Uh, had a little trouble with it, picking it up. It was high. By the time he got it, he was met by a plethora of Smyrna defensemen. Woods and Kadena were the two that played the big hit. No gain on the play. Third down and seven to go. 2.44 on the clock. I'd love to get the football back and see what could happen. Kennegan barking the signals. Back to pass for the Cavs. And it, wow, terrible. They haven't, they haven't made connection on any of their passes tonight. Uh, well, not many of them. That's the second time that Griggs has been totally confused on the play. Well, I'll tell you what, he, the uh, hit looked like uh, Joe Feisman in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, he's um, looked more like Brian the quarterback. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but no, I shouldn't think of anybody else, man. I'm sorry. I was going to say myself. <laughs> He barely gets it off. Rod Wilkes is going to pick it up at the 48. He cuts it out right side. Oh, nice tackle there. Yeah, that's Graves. Graves, nice takedown. And Richardson, his punt wasn't very good. A lot of pressure on him. So, um, well, I tell you what, uh, Rod Wilkes is due, but not on that play. Well, two minutes and 19 seconds. This is an eternity if you're a Kubo defensive player because Smyrna's got uh, the weapons that they can score at any time. It's been a struggle here in the second quarter for them, but you can look for this and come out uh, throwing the football now, particularly uh, with Bryson having some uh, leg cramp problems. Well, he's back in there at back. I was just going to mention that. So he's blocking right now for Sonny. And Sonny has to roll out of the pocket. Now going to tuck it and run and going to be down at the 42 yard line and a loss. You know, somebody was asking me about it. About three yards, four yards. Couldn't get rid of it in time. Now he's over talking to Coach Shadowans on the sidelines. Clock drops under two minutes. Bulldogs up 14 10. Covers by the secondary that time. Sonny couldn't find anybody open. And I tried to tuck it under and run, but by that time it was too late. Are we held responsible for what we say in private? Ball back at the 42 on the right hash. Martin and Hager to the left, Wilkes to the right. Bryson is split to the left and Sonny Gray works from the shotgun. Has some time this time. Across the middle, Hager is there for the hit at the 33-yard line of the Cavaliers. And that's a first bank. First down for the Bulldogs. A 25-yard catch and run by Hager. Weaker Bauer on the takedown by the Cavaliers, but John, that's what we need to see. Hager, a busy man tonight, 12, 14, 27, and catches a 25 tonight from Sonny Gray to Hager. First bank, first down for the Bulldogs. Fake to Bryson, quick pass to Wilkes. Wilkes in the middle of the field, breaks off three tackles, now tucks it at the 25, and going to be pushed out of bounds at the 23-yard line. The clock's still rolling at 58 seconds. And a timeout, Sparta. We'll step aside as well. Be right back. This is Summer Turner at the House of Carpet, just off Old Fort Parkway, across from Red Lobster, to tell you about our huge inventory of carpet, hardwood, ceramic tile, laminate, vinyl, and linens. It's all in stock and ready for you. We also have a large selection of area rugs from 2x3 to 4x15, all in stock. They call the timeout. Still have more to call, I believe. A little confusion here. They need to get the play off. Sonny. Back to pass. Looking, looking. Receivers in trouble. And now pick. Through the pick to Griggs. Sonny, wish he had that one back. Just hold the football and take the loss. New score, Wilson Central 14, Cuff nothing. It's now 17, 17 nothing. Wilson Central, they scored as soon as we said it. I'm not sure that uh, Kugel's going to want to do anything much to run the football now. With 45 seconds to go, 
But they're a team that you got to kind of watch because they might they might shoot for it. Just be the element of surprise to go deep. Uh, John, uh, Sonny just tried to make a little maybe a little too much happen yeah, right there. That time just just tuck it under and, and then take the loss and try again. And again, they do try to run the football and they give it to Langford, 32nd. Unless something big happens on this next play, it's going to be 14-10. It would appear. Ball marked at the 25-yard line. Aishi over the football for the Cavaliers. They go right side and quarterback in again keeps it and is going to be dropped for a three yard loss so that's going to be it here in the first half of play that is all here from the, the home of the Smyrna Bulldogs 14-10 your score 14-10 and the Cavaliers head to the locker room with uh, defensively for Smyrna they did a good job as well Cooper that came out smoking pretty much in the first half and the first quarter that is, and the uh, second quarter they uh, kind of uh, settled down and uh, did a good job as well. Uh, turnovers have been a pretty big factor. Smyrna had one that resulted in a field goal for Kubo, and uh, Kubo also had one that resulted in a score for Smyrna. So the turnovers are pretty much even. Uh, Sonny Gray had an interception late in the first half. Uh, didn't really cost him anything, but he did. The horses uh, so maybe put some points on the board. Order and ready to kick off here to the Cavaliers, who will have about to begin the second half. Deep in the back is Jared Briggs. Oh, what a nice one. And it's going to sail back into the end zone. Well, he's done that all night, has he? He has definitely got the toe this evening. Tonight's broadcast brought to you in part by our friends at Clark's Cheesesteak Factory, Prentice Salsa Feeding and Air, the Smyrna Bowling Center, Mullins Jewelry, Murfreesboro Electric, Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance. Jennings Tire, Bob Parks Auctioneer Stan Bob, Bloodless Fine Photography, where Santa Claus is in town. He'll be there tomorrow from 8 to 3. Also the Murfreesboro Post, Little Caesars, Pizza Pizza, and Idea Screen Printing and Embroidery. You have one of those Clark cheese steaks? I have. I love them. They're really good. I can't believe anybody wouldn't love those. Over there across from, uh, they got two locations, one on South Church and one over there across from the new Walmart. Hand off the length for the loss for a yard. Neck down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, they brought everybody that time. But you can see, I bet, excuse me, Brian, I think you'll see uh, Smyrna tighten up his defense here in the second half uh, as they did in the second quarter. Really shut Langford down uh, after that big, impressive first quarter. Two-yard loss, Brian. Second down. Up the middle. And maybe a yard. New final, Dobbins Bennett 21, Oak Ridge 14. So Kingsport Dobbins Bennett moves on after defeating Oak Ridge this evening, 21-14. Have more for you as we go along through the night. Some East Tennessee scores will be rolling in. Here's Hennigan, that quarterback for the Cavs. Late pitch to Langford, hit once, hit twice, and now right out of bounds for a gigantic, huge, monumental loss. Dakota Woods, and it's a minus seven. That's coming out inspired, I would say. Just constantly <laughs> going to pitch out to Langford, and he's gotten them nowhere. And the pitch was pretty good that time, but Smyrna read that beautifully. And I believe there's Richardson back there to punt. A little scary thought seeing uh, Rodriguez Wilkes at, at your own 45 and you're punting. You have to be scared of that. Wilkes is going to let it roll, and it's going to take a roll to midfield and to the 49-yard line of Smyrna High School. So just underway here, and the Smyrna defense holds Cookville to a three and out. And we'll see what the uh, Bulldogs can muster here on their uh, first drive here at the second half. 
And I'd really like to see him go back to uh, giving that ball to uh, Jeremiah Bryson here in the second half and not only do that, eat up some clock and uh, go, down, or go against that big senior offensive line they've got. Riverdale leading center, nothing in half. They're already underway, I'm sure, there. Pass across the middle, incomplete to Will Martin. Wow. Well, that is at least the third or fourth drop pass out there. And he was wide open. There he was that time. Will wish he had that one back. Again, it looks like they're trying to win the football before they actually catch it. There's, there's, they were, he was wide open that time. Two minutes to go in the third. Riverdale now has a two-touchdown lead over the Pioneers, 14-0. The Riverdale defense has been strong all year and it hasn't changed tonight. Sonny Gray, second and ten after the incomplete pass. Jeremiah Bryson tripped up after picking up three yards. Well, he had uh, a lot of real estate there, John. I think he just fell over a lineman. He fell over his own lineman. Third down and seven. Been a, lot of, been a lot of third day long situations. Exactly. That's hard to sustain drives when you've got that looking at you all the time. Ball now in Cookville territory. And somebody jumped off sides, and it has to be the Cavs, you'd think, but could have been drawn off. We'll see. And it's against the Cavaliers. Is that the first penalty? It is, sir. You are correct. That's, I was just thinking, you know, we haven't seen that very often. And that is the first penalty of the game. Well, that's something to be said, I guess. I don't know that I've ever been a part of a first half. I didn't notice it, but... High backfield for Sonny this time. Hendricks jumped off again. It. They sure did. And this is going to be enough for a first down. Well, John, I guess we could do this the whole way down to the oh, end I'm for I'm, I'm <laughs> forward if you are. This will be enough to give them the first down. Oh, oh start. it's against Smyrna. Well, well we jumped the gun. We, we've been penalized. We, we did an illegal uh, call from the radio booth. Yes, four, five yards on you, Brian. Uh, okay, I'll take it. I'll take one for the team. Well, let's blame it on Tom. Well, we always blame it on Donnie, and he can't hear. So. <laughs> Third down and seven again. So we got five yards and get it right back. Now Sonny's going to work from the shotgun again. Bison split to his right. Now Torres is going to line up as a blocker to the left side. Back to pass Sonny Gray. Burns it incomplete. Intended for Hager and threw it behind him. I'm not sure if he ran the proper route or whether the ball was thrown erroneously. Seems like we're not in sync, is it, with, uh, with the passing department tonight. Sonny had plenty of time. The route was run, run pretty well. I think it's great threw it behind him a little bit that time. Fourth down. Gray's still in there. They may still plenty to us. He's done that a lot. That, Although it looks like they're going for it, he may go ahead and decide to punt it. He's so far back, he is going to punt. And nobody back for the return, and can they get there to it? I don't know. They laid it down at the one, and it's picked up by Griggs, and Griggs may have made a mistake, although he's got some blockers right side. 20, 30, 40, and dumped at the 47-yard line. There is a flag near where he made the cut up field. So that gives me hope. Well, that was an unusual play. It looked like the ball was dead there at about the two yard line and Griggs and Hurley picked it up. We thought it was a dead duck at about the three yard line. He went around the uh, right end and all of a sudden he found a hole. Let's see what, what they're gonna call here. The officials, the officials are talking it over. It sure seems like that would be against Cooper with some kind of illegal block or but what gets me is where they're standing. That's confusing. Well, the flag is still laying back there at the 10. And the ball right now is at the 27. Philip Shadowin's looking on attentively, asking what's going on. And now the Jeopardy music is playing. Jeff Shipley's all over it here. That's <laughs> my. <laughs> now here comes the official in the white hat. It's a block in the back against the Cookville Cavaliers. But now I think there's some discussion on where the ball goes, and it should be way back there. 
What was so confusing is where they were meeting to talk about it. You'd think they would. Well, they're going way back. I, you know, I, I hear the couple coaches over here saying, I don't think they know where to spot it, and that may be the case. Tonight's game brought to you in part by On The Ball Magazine, our friends at Franklin's Printworks, Portable Sign Company, TriStar Home Mortgage at KJ Hart, Willows Grill on Broad Street, and Bob Parks Auctioneer, Bob Bug. They still haven't put the football down. <laughs> now the officials passed it to each other, flipped it three times, and still wind up about where they picked it up at. They're gonna mark it off from the 10. It really is going to be about where they tried to knock it out. Smyrna did. It's going to be on what the four yard line. It's yeah. The nose of the football is on the five. Let's see what Donnie's got to say. The guys with three water. Apparently, what happened? The ball, the ball was down. Uh, when the the Smyrna receiver touched it. The ball was uh, ruled down, and um, so Cooper's going to have the ball. Uh, they're deep in their goal line, but the ball's ruled down by the Spurner receiver. All right, Donnie, appreciate that. Clear that up for us, and uh, tailback gets it for a yard. Saladay. Well, that makes sense because he did touch it. It looked like he bounded right there, and that, that does make sense, Brian. That's not something you can pick up and, and run the football. Woods on the tackle. Course one of high school, second down, eight yards to go. The ball back, tenth, their own six. To 94 yards to go for the Cavaliers. I'll have to hold up here. Hand off to the third back, and that's Saladay again. I guess he got the line of scrimmage. Third down, they don't move the stick across the back. Medina on the takedown. It's amazing how conservative Cooper has gotten here in the last few series they've had the football. That makes me think they're trying to lull people to sleep. I don't know. I, I just don't trust Jerry Johnson. He's always got something up his sleeve. Like what they were doing early in terms of that short passing game to the sideline, run the sideline routes. Back to pass, and in again, incomplete. Overthrew his receiver by about 10 yards, intended for Bobby Lynn, fourth down. Threw it to a lot of coverage, too. There were three Smyrna defenders down there, and even any of those three could have picked that ball off. Brentwood three, Hunters Lane nothing at the half. That is a brand new score in. Well, that's a boring game, sounds like. 14-10 here, all of those points in the first quarter, I believe. Good field position for the Bulldogs as this punt bounds out of bounds at the 42. Now a flag, and this is going to be against Cookville, I think, and I think it's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty because this came in so late, and the official threw it in the direction of a player walking off the field. Jerry Jocelyn's not happy now and throws his clipboard or his towel. The head official is the one who threw the flag. Personal foul against the Cavs. So that's going to mark it off from the 41 and a half yard line. So they have 15 yards and a great field position for the dogs. So we really need to put this one in. So you've got a good field position. It's time to get a, get a score out of this, Brian. We can't just keep going down the field and and get a good field position and not be able to put something on the scoreboard. That takes the ball all the way to the 26-yard line of Cookville. Let's see what the Bulldogs do with it here. 7.15 on the clock, 14-10, same score as we had at half. Maybe this will energize the Dogs' offense. Their defense has played a heck of a second half so far. Gray, fake, on the reverse, Wilkes. Fumbled it, went right back to him, and he picked up three yards in a scary type of way. Is it Halloween, full moon, something? Variable on the tackle. I think it's not full moon or Halloween. I just think it's execution. We're just not, not getting it well like we can do. Well, that ball bounced right back into his hands, and he picked up three yards, but he had more than that written on that play. 
Second down, eight to go from the Cavalier 24 for Smyrna High. Hendricks and Bryson in the backfield. Bryson goes left side, bangs through the line, down to the 20 and a four yard gain. Bearable again on the takedown for the Cookville Cavaliers. 14 nothing. Last score we had two minutes left in the third. Riverdale leading Warren County. Third down five. We have had third and long. We haven't had a third and two in forever. Now third and five for the Bulldogs. And they drop the long side again. Hard count through the Cavaliers off. And this should be enough for the first down, or it's going to be very close if it's not. Offsides against the Cavs. And it's going to be just short. I think we're saying inches, or they're moving the chains. One, they're moving the chains. First bank, first down on the penalty, I believe. There's one official is pointing the other way. Is it in my imagination of the, of the officials really slow? A little slow. A little bit. Let's not say slow. We don't want to criticize. We're, we're just saying they're a little deliberate. First bank, first down for the dogs. And here's Bryson. Breaks it. Bryson at the 10. Down to the five, punches for the end zone. The ball is loose, but give me the signal. I think he's going to be just short of the end zone. Touchdown! He's there. They give it to him. Touchdown! Bulldogs. Leap to the byline, and that's where he got the uh, touchdown. 16-yard run from Jeremiah Bryson. And I was glad to see him go back to the running play again. They leaped with the pile on and then uh, scored, and they gave it to him. The ball rolled out a little bit by but that didn't matter. He'd already scored. The ball was reached the plane. And here's the extra attempt. It is up and good. It's 21-10. Bulldogs up. 5.29 left in the third. Right back we will be after this. That's 225-2630. Black Box Telecommunications. Call us today. Now, now, after the game, the game, the game. Now, scoring in maybe some unconventional fashion. <laughs> However, makes it happen. Jeremiah Bryson with the touchdown to put up the Bulldogs here, 21-10. We just thought it was a matter of time. They just kept getting that good field position better and better and better. And if your team might score, eventually is going to score. They don't even look, do they? The kicks it now. They don't even attempt to look at the ball. Why would you? I mean, what are, that one's still going. I think it's bouncing around out there on Sam Ridley. Is the field goal good? <laughs> that hit the upright. Oh, mercy. Some new finals in here. William Blunt blanks Campbell County 28 to nothing. So... Uh, William Blunt moves on, and also Beard blanked Udawa, the team that Smyrna beat in the semifinals. That is a 35-0 final, Beard over Udawa. And flags and whistles before this one gets underway. Well, I don't have a clue who was drawn or whether they going to be against them. Uh, I think Kubel moved. They did because they're backing them up. False start. Well, you had to say there were no penalties, didn't you? I had to say it. <laughs> I guess that is my fault, isn't it? <laughs> well, they've done a good job on that. People minus, with one minus yards rushing right now. In the second half. Sending three bad outs to the right, two to the left. Receivers everywhere for Espinosa at quarterback. They come after him. They level him as he launches the football out there. And that was number 31, Drew Garner, the sophomore 5'6", 185-pound linebacker. What a hit. So Dobbins, Bennett, William Blunt, and Bearden are among the sweet 16, if you will. The winner of this game will be there. The winner of the Riverdale-Warren County game will be there as well as others. 
Second and 15 now with the incomplete pass. Espinoza has this one batted away. And that is batted away by Dakota Woods, the defensive line junior, 260-pounder. Well, that's exactly what Smyrna wants to do, get uh, Kugler in passing situations. And uh, they'll just keep skidding further, further. And they're looking at third and 15 now. This is this is where you want Kugler. You don't want him running the football against you. And they have it at their own 15-yard line. So they have to get it to their 30 for a first down. A little confusion out there. They get the play call. Espinoza at quarterback. Mason Espinoza, 5'11", 160 pounds, and they hit him again as he launches it, and it's incomplete. And this time, it was Kyle Frazier from his defensive end spot, the senior, got in there to level Espinoza, two of three plays there. He ate dirt. Yeah, that looked good, and uh, pretty good coverage there by number 13, uh, Andrew Jenkins, on that play. Wilkes is standing at his own 41, ready for the Taylor Richardson kickoff, or uh, punt, I should say. Well, they come after this, and he barely gets it off, and it takes a smart of bounce, bounces back, and they fall on it right around the 37-yard line. So Smart in really good shape here with a 21-10 lead and the football with 5.02 left here in the third. Brian Smyrna is getting the ball in great field position, and now it's just a matter of if Kugel's going to try to stay in this game, they're going to have to move the football a little bit on Smyrna to get it out of this very in, very in graveyard land is what I call it. They just can't. They're, they're, still in, they're starting out with their own 38 yard, or yard line, the Kugel 38 yard line. From the 37, well, somebody had to be offsides there because <laughs> he just leveled it. Donnie, what's going on down there with you? I tell you what, guys, that kind of fun of defense really began to blow his neck as uh, number 31, Drew Carr, he blitzed and got pressed on the quarterback. And then number 11, uh, the defensive being uh, laid a hard neck on the quarterback. And uh, that punt, uh, they got a hand on this. So the fun of defense really began to uh, rise to the occasion here in the third quarter. Donnie, he has felt so many offside for the, uh, as of late. Jeremiah Bison, 30, and to the 27 yard line. He didn't hear me, did he? Nick White on the tackle. And it'll be near the first down yardage out there. Yes, it is. The first bank, first down. Go to Smyrna High School Bulldogs. And that makes it first and 10 from the 26 yard line. Sonny Gray. That's one receiver to either side of an eye backfield, and this is a handoff to Bison. Swips and falls, but a flag late. And maybe I think I saw somebody dive in there at the end of that play. I don't know. That, we'll just have to see. Hold. Brian, let's go. I want to go back down to Donnie. Uh, Donnie, how come uh, we haven't yeah, had so many offside penalties as of late? You know what, guys? I think, the, um, I think both teams are uh, doing a good job of uh, changing, changing their cadence uh, by the quarterbacks, but uh, those are some, some big mistakes and helping to uh, keep, some, keep some drives going for the Bulldogs here. But the, the quarterback's doing a good job of changing his uh, account to holding penalty from the spot of the infraction makes it first and 23 for Smyrna High School now as the ball is back to Carroll Florida. Ray right back to the point of as he walks it out there and it's picked off. He was hit late and it's picked off 20, 30, 40 and out of bounds. And I believe that pick was by Casey Webb. The second one of the night for Sonny Gray at their best field position here in the second half. And it comes as a result of an interception. I want to remind you tomorrow, if you'd like to help a very fine young man who is battling Burkitt's lymphoma, a 10-year-old, Chase Donnell, at uh, Walter Hill School, a Walter Hill uh, student out there. They're having a chili summer. 
since August, and finally gets to come home maybe tomorrow, but still a long battle ahead for him. Hennigan, pass again to Webb, and Webb out of bounds with a 40 yard line. And John, that's their seven yard pickup. That's their biggest of the second half there too, isn't it? It is, and uh, that is probably the most effective pass play. It's just a little side route. Uh, they go in to, and then out to the sock lines, and uh, it's about a seven yard gain. It's been the most, probably the most effective pass all night. 21-10, Smyrna High School up. Really the tailback, one yard. Drew Garner on the stop for the Bulldogs, and we'll call it third and we well, I talk about a huge play for Clifford now. This is big. Third and one, maybe not even quite that one. If not, I'm sure it's going to get it back. Three minutes left here in the third. 21-10 Bulldogs. Third and inches, and they got it easily. Saladay. Gets it to midfield and picks up four and moves the chains for the Cavaliers of Cookville High School. Again, Riverdale leading 14 0. That's the latest score we have for you from there, and that was in the fourth. Best run by Salada of the night. At that time, he just lowered his head and uh, got some good yardage to pick up that first half of Cookville. Their first, first half of the second half. They are just inside Smyrna territory, moving away from the highway, right to left. This is Lankford. Lankford picks up two. John, they've kind of gone to the run game here uh, on this last series here and really haven't aired it out much and have ran it pretty effectively. It brings up second and seven. Well, I think those little short passes that they're running help them with that uh, running game. You just cannot keep running and running and running. I really guess a good team like Smyrna is going to do a whole lot without a little bit of passing just to keep that, uh, off, that defensive line honest here. Woods on the tackle for Smyrna High. Aishi Blank brings out the Cavaliers in tight. Three in the backfield and a trick play. Halfback pass is going to fall way short. Jared Griggs, who did play at quarterback, there is a flag too out there right around the 46-yard uh, line. Well, that, that, terrible pass. That was a good-looking play, but you're right, a terrible pass. It was a good-looking play, and, and uh, they, I think they had some run beat on that play just a little bit, uh, but he had nothing on the throw at all. And he played at least one series, if not uh, one down, if not two, earlier in the game. They played three quarterbacks tonight. I think he never did really get a good grip on the football. No flag. They're picking it up. So third down and seven. Ball at the 46-yard line of Smyrna for the Cavaliers. Another huge third down play here for Cookville, John. You, you almost feel like they're going to make a game out of they need to score here. They're just, I think, they're right, right. I think they're going to have to move the football. You get late in the third quarter. There he gets the point. And he another touchdown. Back to pass this time, and catched and dropped it. No, incomplete. Incomplete. He had that ball in his hands, and that he was Bobby Lynn and Cody Hager defending there. I'm not sure Cody had anything to do with that. I think he just dropped it. Yeah, and I think he was bobbling it as he was going out of bounds, so I'm not sure that it would have been a completion, even if he'd held on to it. They're going to go for it here on fourth down, I think. Because Hennigan's still in at quarterback. Riverdale just scored to make it 21-0 with seven minutes to go in the fourth, leading the Warren County Pioneers. Not a very good pass from Hennigan. And the Bulldogs are going to take over on downs. Casey Webb had kind of penetrated that Smyrna zone and found a little seam open, but Hennigan just threw it high to him. And uh, Smyrna's going to get it back here after giving up only the first down, and that's all. 
Now I think you'll see Smyrna maybe perhaps use a little clock. Use Jeremiah Bryce and try to get him to put ball a little bit more here now. First and ten for the Bulldogs, a minute 30 left. In the third. The 46 of Smyrna. Bryson hustles his way to midfield right at the 50 for a four-yard game. Jeremiah Bryson over 100 yards now rushing. 109 to be exact. Second down to go. Six yards facing the Bulldogs, a minute four. High back field for Sonny. Quick ball pointing again. He's not offside at least twice, not three or four times. Lost count now. All of this quarter. Here's Bryson. Bryson hits for a loss of two. Well, they came after him. Strickland, boy, he blitzed in there. What a heck of a hit. Lost a yard and a half, third and seven. Only 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Ought to have some updates on Lincoln County, Lebanon, as well as uh, Coffee County, Wilson Central coming up here in just a few minutes. Riverdale leading Warren County 21-0, and here it's 21-10. Bulldogs over the Cavaliers. They may get this one play off in five seconds. This is going to be the last play of the quarter. Gray looking left, passing left, incomplete. And defending was Derek Wagerbauer, and uh, he maybe had a better chance at that pass. That's the end of the third, and we'll see what the Bulldogs do in this fourth quarter. 21-10 in favor of Smyrna High School. This is Amanda Kivanini inviting you and your family to do your Christmas shopping here at Animal City. And don't forget to put pet lover on your Christmas list. We carry a wide net. Two fourth quarter score, Independence 35, Gallup and nothing. That in the fourth on your Jennings and Ears Funeral Home scoreboard. In the front on the fourth down is Sonny Gray. Sonny gets off a honey of a kick. Briggs at the 15, at the 20, and dives forward, and there is another penalty flag. Who is the joker who mentioned about the penalties? I don't know, but he should be fired. Is what I'm thinking. Don't say that too loudly. <laughs> Somebody might take you up on that. Now, the good news here is that, for example, the New York Post has a certain Good for will have the ball now. And I didn't see the penalty. I don't know what would happen. I can't work the equipment. So, uh, penalty against Cookville, and they'll mark it off from the 20, and it's a 10-yard penalty. And that's going to be on number 12, Jeremy Brooksbank. Was it a hole? Yes, it was. So back to the 10, 90 yards to go. Brian, you're going to give us all the uh, updates on who's going to play who next week. All the brackets. I kind of love that second. The bracket is, is definitely filling in here tonight. Espinoza back in at quarterback. Langford maybe eats out a yard or two. Second down and nine and a half. They give him a half a yard on that. Again, the field position is in big favor for Smyrna, and this has been the way it has been, with the exception of that interception return where they got the ball to 40. They just have not had good field position at all in the second half. Espinoza back to pass, looking right, passing right, and I don't know, complete. It is complete to Casey Webb. Eight yard pickup. Jonah Hendricks on the uh, tackle for Smyrna High School, and it brings up third down, and with that gain, we'll call it two. Okay, 
New score 21 7, Riverdale over Warren County with four minutes and 46 seconds to go in the fourth. Brand new score in here, it's 21 10 in favor of Smyrna High School. Third and two from the 18 of Cookville. Espinosa's going to keep it and try to rumble, and I don't think he got it. And now he's pushed back by a mound of Bulldogs. We'll just have to wait and see where his forward progress got him. Well, he had to get to what? The, looks like we're in the 19, so I, I, I think they're close, but I don't know whether they got enough or not. Let's check in and see what's going on down there with Donnie Johnson with the Steve Martin Construction Field Report. Thanks, Brian. Well, obviously, uh, Flip was back. Uh, it's against the wall. They've, uh, they've gone with uh, their starting quarterback, Tyler Hingen. He's not in the game. They're going for their passing quarterback, number 15, Mason Espinosa. He's got quite a arm in but uh, obviously, uh, he's not, not, not that much of a runner. And he was stopped uh, on a bust that play there in 32. So, Flip is going to have to force uh, the ball over the front. They do fake. And Griggs has the first down easily. and. And gets it up to the left of 26 yard line and kind of read that one a little bit from here. They direct snapped it over to him. Well, that was a, that was a good call, gutsy call, but one that they really probably needed to go for because, again, time is running out and they don't need one score, they need two scores. Bear get defeated uh, Jefferson County 24 to 7 tonight. So, Bear get will play Dobbins Bennett next week and we'll host them pass out of bounds boy that was good coverage and i cannot believe they're fixing for a flag and what i think they're going to do uh the coverage was by jonah hendricks and he was right there by him i didn't see any pushing or anything i hope this is not an unsports it's on the sidelines on the catch you know was a I don't know. We'll just have to see. What do you think it is again? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I, I, the only thing I thought would have been pass interference. Rapping the passer. Pass. Well, that's where the flag and pass interference. So two. Well, I, just don't, I don't. I do not see. I did not see the pass interference because I wasn't looking for the quarterback. Uh, I could buy that one, but I. That, it's only Hendricks seems like he never tested it. They're just going down the sidelines with it. They decline the roughing the passer. Donnie had his eye on that. What in the world happened, Don? The guys uh, they had a roughing the passer penalty uh, called against Smyrna, and they also had a passer and parents call against Smyrna. Football declined the roughing the passer. They're going to take the passer. And you know that ball was going away. Well, my question with it is, I didn't see the interference, and I was looking right at that play, and I saw him go down the sidelines, and then unless he pushed him, which I didn't see anything, it looked like a clean, clean coverage there. I, I just did not see that. 9.39 left in this ball game. Smyrna up 21-10, second and 10 to go for the Cavaliers with the ball of their own 40. They have to have two scores here. He's the passing quarterback, John. <laughs> he struggles at times. Uh, he's, had a, he's had a rough night. And, but Smyrna's got everything covered deep, Brian. They have not been able to go anything over 10, 15 yards tonight with any kind of consistency. In fact, that, the longest pass they've completed is 12 yards. And, and that was not a 12-yard pass. It was a, a run after the catch. But uh, they just really struggled to try, trying to go deep tonight against them. Third and 10 now facing Cookville High School. At the 20, and 
he's going to be out of bounds at the 15, but there is a flag laying at the 30-yard line. Camden on the tackle, but there is a penalty flag laying right at the 30. Thought he might have had the chance to break that one, but he did not. Well, it's a 40-yard pass play if it is with his fans. Face mask it is the Bulldogs. Well, we have given them several chances on this drive here with huge penalties. And it's only the five-yard penalty. It's not the personal foul face mask penalty, but it does put the ball down to the smart of 15 and a new set of downs for the Cavaliers. First and 10. I really wish you could say anything about anything tonight. That <laughs> kid, just I was top. having a bad night before the 40 yard pass. <laughs> right side. Now a high catch to Brooks Banks. And down to the five yard line and a 10 yard pickup. See what I mean? <laughs> Stop talking. Okay, I'll just describe it and I'll let you do it. Can, can you just, can you just get me out? <laughs> On the radio, it's been hard to do that, is it? Just laugh and look at the audience, you know, imagine what's going on. I could. Maybe, maybe Tom can do it. <laughs> it it's your commentary. Okay. Well, I'll well, make you out. Well, leave it to me. Leave the commentary to me, okay? First down and goal to go from the floor. Espinoza, happy feet. Oh, what a hit. The ball loose. And it's for the Bulldog Cabin. And Andrew Jenkins. Andrew Jenkins intercepted that pass. The deflection went off the number 83, I think. That was Bobby Lynn. And right in the hands of Andrew Jenkins, who alertly just scooted out of the end zone. And returned it to the 40, about the 44 or 46 yard line here. All I saw was somebody running it the other way and in a purple jersey. What about that play, Donnie? That kind of turns the tide a bit. And Donnie would say, yes, did turn the tide a bit. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 46 yard line. So you're going to take his job back. I did. Okay. I just went <laughs> We've got a smart up. We have a little penalty. signal for Donnie, and I think I think we I think I thought we were seeing he was signaling us, and he wasn't signaling us. I believe that's a personal foul penalty. I'm not going to beat a dead horse though. Oh well, let's not do that by any means. Now we have about 100 yards of penalties, when we didn't have any before that statement was made. Philip Territory at the 46 yard line. And a 16 yard scamper by Bryson. Carter on the takedown for Cookville High School. I'm smart, I just keep giving the ball a little dear mind and let him do his thing. New scoreboard update here, and uh, what do you got there on Riverdale, Tom? Uh, huh. Brian with a minute 34 left in the game at Riverdale. from 40. 
Bobby, seven yards away, clears that head back, turns on the Jets, and finds Peter. Those will put a lot of people over the line of scrimmage that time, and once he broke that plane, he was gone. That one guy to beat, he just left him to the ground. Here is Mr. Woodard to take off a point after. Snap, set, kick is all good, and it's 28 10. Bulldogs up with the cost of the city here. Sailor Concepts from 893 CELA. And up to the 35 yard line goes Jared Riggs and the uh, Riverdale game has gone final. Riverdale a winner, 28-7. 28-7. The first one about Jeremiah. And that was complete to Bobby Lynn. Hunter's Lane tonight has defeated Brentwood 14 to 10. 14 to 10. Hunter's Lane goes on. I'll give you a few seconds. Play a few years Yeah, six, yeah. Yeah. Out there to Wesley Cadena. We can start giving those to the like the players, the players of the game, He gets the first down up to the 50. That was a great run that time. Uh, spotted the uh, cut the heat, a boy one tackle, then ran to the sidelines, picked up the first down. If Wilson Central holds on, they will play at Riverdale next week. And that will be our broadcast game next week. Is that going to answer that? Look at that, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Who will play against this? Oh, sorry. Oh, Gaston North. That's right. Yeah. Good, good job. Right side, here's Langston, cuts it 50, 45, 40, and spun out of bounds at the 44 and a half yard line and a nice gain of 11 yards that time. Kimmon on the push out there. Yeah, he's got a lot of that guy. He's got a little more height than Gaston. Though. Yeah, I think so. Probably, uh, I don't know if he's as strong or big in terms of weight, but we'll see what, what he looks like when he's a senior. Well, he's got three more years That's before exactly they go <laughs> You know, uh, but I'm talking about the way he cuts up the field and they get the field vision down in the front of that. Uh, Gaston Miller has that ability too, and that first first to see that little quick jaunt right at the line of scrimmage. 28-10 in favor of Smyrna. Triple. On the drive, oh my goodness, what a hit out there on Casey Webb. And that was Rod Wilkes, and that, I think, will leave a mark. Nine-yard pickup, but they made him pay, Rod Wilkes. That's why he will be playing on Saturdays next year. One of many reasons. Ball at the 30 on the left hash. Second down, one yard to go. Hennigan taking this drive for the Cavs. Three wide right. Pitch back is the Langston and another hard hit. And this one is Corey Cannon. Langford got smacked. I think Smyrna's starting to smell victory here, aren't, aren't you? I think they 
They are starting to get a little bold with their tackling, but they made two good tackles that time. Timeout on the play, on the field, 28 not, or 28-10. We had with Bloodman 7, Lincoln County 6, that's still in the third. And then the fourth is Wilson Central, 38, Coffee County 0. Kenny getting back to pass, pump fake to the end zone, and incomplete. Had a man there, and that was Jared Briggs, and Briggs has made some awesome plays, but Wilkes and Hager back there to break it up. Yeah, now Briggs pushed off a little bit to the best of the iron, but it's still over the ball. Too little too late, I think, here for uh, five minutes to go, a little over five minutes to go. Even if they score, there's still two touchdowns. Two, uh, four. Four goal a they are going to go for it here on fourth down. They really have to with 5.15 left in the game. Get again and incomplete. He threw it right to Tyler Eady and it hit off of him, the lineman, and fell away. So Smyrna will take over. Out down. Riverdale winner tonight, 28-7 over Warren County and. Um, other winners tonight, uh, Bearden, William Blunt, Dobbins Bennett, and Farragut, and Hunters Lane. We'll have more rolling in here any minute. Wilson Central, the four yard line is going to be down at a 12 yard pickup that time for Jeremiah Bryson. Eaton on the tackle. 100 yards rushing in the uh, second half now. And Brian, that's after a quarter that he didn't really touch the football in the third quarter and most of the second quarter. But the first and fourth quarters have been remarkable. Final, Lincoln County 20, 11 and 17. Lincoln County 20, 11 and 17. So Smyrna, timeout Smyrna. We'll take a timeout here and be right back. Bulldogs up 28-10. That's your locally owned WT Smyrna. You can always find a three new fix. See some new players in here at some point. Maybe after this drive, don't know. Sonny Gray with a hard count. I backfield, Hendricks, and I believe Bryson back there. Wilkes to the left and another receiver out there to the right. Here's Sanders, and Sanders scampering up to near the 50-yard line, and he picks up six. They're gonna put him down at the 49, so a five-yard pickup. Birdwell on the tackle for Cookville High School. Second down and five. The conclusion of the game, it's the Prentice Hall Sapeating and Air Fifth Quarter Show. We'll have all sorts of uh, information there for you in that particular program as we wrap up round one of the playoffs. It's like we're gonna have both Rutherford County teams to the Sweet 16, if you will. Sanders again tripped up right at the 45-yard line, and Sanders is going to pick up the first down to the seven-yard game for David Sanders. Tripped up out there by three. Another first down for the Bulldogs. Lincoln County. The reason they will host next week is because they finished first in their region and Smyrna finished second. So Smyrna will have to go to Lincoln County next week. Wilson Central was close to beating Coffee County. They will play at Riverdale next week, and that will be our broadcast game. Gray looking, looking, and now running right side, and gonna slide down at the 41. And a pickup of four yards by Sonny Gray. So Lincoln County, Riverdale, Bearden, William Blunt, Dobbins, Bennett, Farragut, and Hunters Lane are the teams that we know are in now. 
Independence was beating the Stephens out of uh, Gallatin tonight. So they will likely move on. Wilson Central will likely move on unless something freakish happens. 2.40 left here before we can ink in the Bulldogs. Sanders, 35-30, cuts back down to the 25. David Sanders, 17 yards. Well, this has been a David Sanders drive here. As Jeremiah Bison's watching this from the sidelines and his, his night done here, John, it looks like. You're right, Brian. Jeremiah Bryson, uh, 17 carries, 182 yards oh, on the night. Oh, three touchdowns. He's only a freshman. I backfield for Gray. First down, first bank, first down at the 24 at Cookville High School. And off to the tailback, flags fly, I believe. Hendricks on the carry, gets three yards. Crook on the tackle for Cookville. And it's a face mask penalty against the Cavs. We're all done with this, but the, the singing here. It's a five yard penalty. And the Bulldogs will have second. Well, no, first, first down. They get the down again. So if Smyrna wins this game, uh, they're going to be going to Lincoln County to be coming here, right? Well, they go to Lincoln County, they do go to Lincoln County. It's the higher seed, depending on the region, that's fine. They're the host. Wilson Central next week. Left side, here's Sanders. Sanders is going to be hit and then down to the 10. Nice eight yard run. Sanders reminds me a lot, John, the Jeremiah Bryson. Well, he's definitely got that and uh, reminds me of uh, a player from Laverne. You were doing a little trivia. Randall Tillery? Randall Tillery, yeah, that's right. He, he's, he's got a kind of Randall's stature, you know what I mean? Remember uh, Chris Gray? Remember Chris Gray from Laverne, too? Give me the running back? I think uh, he's a lot of ago. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Ten yeah. years ago. Yeah, I know the wide receiver. There's the other Chris Gray. Yeah, the other Chris Gray. Got a penalty, another one against the Cavaliers. Yes, they say it's an illegal substitution penalty against Cooper. Well, the Riverdale's Wilson Central matchup, that might be a pretty good one. Uh, pretty good game last time against those two, but I think Riverdale looked, looked a lot quicker in that game. We'll see. I guess we'll be seeing that game. Yes, we will. So we'll know all about that. And it was not a Region 4 5 a sweep, but it's going to be very close. Lebanon lost by three at Lincoln County. But everybody else, Wilson Central, Smyrna, and Riverdale are going to win their games. Riverdale's already won, and Smyrna has a minute 18 away from it. First and goal from the 10. Sonny Gray taking his time, letting the clock wind down. I don't think they really want to score here. They take a knee. They don't. I'll do this one more time. Um, got lots of late scores in, and we'll we'll check some more for you here. But uh, well, we got a timeout on the field. Let's do a little bit of that. So we'll take another one and be right back. Spot with us. So Chad Owens hasn't missed a show in a long, long time, has he? You know, I don't I don't remember the last time he did, John, to tell you the truth. Cookville called the timeout with Smyrna trying to take a knee here, and Smyrna takes another knee to let the clock roll. And Cookville doesn't take another timeout, so at least that's helpful. Independence beat Gallatin tonight, 42 to 7. 42 to 7. Independence a winner. Oh my gosh. Henry County beat Raleigh Egypt tonight. Just a weird score, 70 to 14. And that's with the clock running after a 35 point lead. <laughs> that's about all we have for uh, your final. So Independence, Hunters Lane, Farragut, Robbins Bennett, uh, William Blunt, Beard, Riverdale, Wilson Central, Smyrna, and Lincoln County. He's all going to be in here in the Smyrna game about to wrap up here with six to five or four. The clock rolling down in your final is going to be the Smyrna.